My name is Rose, and I'm a 34-year-old office worker. My husband, David, and I have been married for 10 years. We had a child soon after we got married, so our daughter will be turning 10 this year. It's not that I don't have any complaints about my marriage, but overall, I'm happy because my daughter has grown into such a lovely and wonderful girl. However, my main dissatisfaction with my husband revolves around money. David has a habit of spending a significant amount on his hobbies, it's not excessive, but still quite a lot. I constantly insist that he brings in just enough money to cover the household expenses, like utilities and groceries. But because he only provides the bare minimum, I've had to cut back on other costs. On top of that, I've been paying the rent, covering our daughter's school tuition, and saving for her future education with my own salary. Then, there's the issue of housework. My husband does none of it. I wanted to split the responsibilities since we both work, but he'd always say, if I do it, it'll just take longer, using that as an excuse to avoid doing anything. So, it became the norm for me to handle everything. Even after our daughter was born, he hardly participated in raising her, claiming he was afraid he might hurt her or cause an accident. As I reflected on our situation, I realized I was quite dissatisfied with David. But after ten years of marriage and with our child growing up, I knew that divorcing while our daughter was about to enter puberty wasn't a good idea. I convinced myself that no marriage is perfect and tried to accept the distance that had grown between us. However, something happened recently that changed my mind about divorce completely. It all started with my sister-in-law. One day, she showed up at my house unexpectedly. Rose, I'm sorry, but I need to hide here for a while. What's going on? I asked. I had a bit of trouble with my husband. Let me stay here for a while. What? Did something happen with Tom? No, it's just, you know, she replied, avoiding my questions and trying to change the subject. I wasn't convinced, so I waited for David to come home. When David returned around 8 p.m., after putting our daughter to bed, we sat down with my sister-in-law to talk. Sis, what happened? David asked. Well, Tom suddenly snapped and told me he wants a divorce, she said. What? I was surprised. Tom had always seemed like a sincere and calm man not the type to get angry and ask for a divorce out of the blue. Why did Tom get angry? I pressed. Why are you asking me that? She snapped back. Because I don't think Tom is the kind of person who would get angry without a reason, I replied. That's what I want to know. I couldn't help but notice that my sister-in-law seemed panicked, but if Tom was asking for a divorce, there must have been something she did to make him that angry. Rose, why are you defending Tom so much? Are you having an affair with him? She suddenly accused. Of course not. I responded, shocked. Hmm, I wonder, she said suspiciously. My husband then laughed and said, No, sis, that's not possible. She doesn't even have the time for that. Besides, Rose always leaves her phone on the table. Though he was defending me, his remark irritated me. I was constantly juggling work, housework, and raising our child. I barely had time to make dinner after work, let alone look at my phone. In the end, my sister-in-law stuck to her claim, I don't know why he's angry. We couldn't get a clear answer, so my husband and I decided to talk to Tom directly. Later, when Tom came over, my sister-in-law conveniently left saying it would be awkward to see him. As soon as Tom arrived, he politely apologized to us. I'm really sorry for causing you both so much trouble. Tom was a sincere man, and it seemed out of character for him to suddenly get angry. Why did you ask my sister for a divorce? You've only been married for a year. Isn't that a bit harsh? There must be a reason, right? I asked. She spent all of my money without permission, Tom replied. Really? How much money did you have saved? 
I asked. Fifty thousand dollars. My husband and I exchanged surprised looks. Fifty thousand dollars in just one year. That was about four thousand one hundred dollars a month. And Tom had already been giving her enough from his income to cover all living expenses. So, my sister-in-law had been spending it all on her own entertainment. Naturally, Tom was furious. Who wouldn't be? I certainly would be if I were in his shoes. Staying married to someone with such reckless spending habits would be tough. Is something wrong? My husband asked when he noticed my pause. Oh, nothing. It's just, well, you have a bad spending habit too, I admitted, realizing how similar he and his sister were. If she doesn't pay back the $50,000, divorce her. You don't have kids, so it seems like a reasonable decision, my husband added. As I nodded in agreement, my husband suddenly interrupted with, Okay, I'll make sure my sister pays you back. Why was he so confident about that? I didn't understand where his certainty came from, but Tom simply replied, I'd appreciate that. With that, the conversation ended, and I decided to keep an eye on the situation. Later, when my sister-in-law returned, she immediately asked, What did Tom say? Tom said you spent all of his $50,000 in savings, I answered. Oh, I used it for living expenses. I tried to explain, but he just didn't get it, she defended herself. But Tom mentioned he had a separate account specifically for living expenses, I countered. Og, you don't know anything, so just shut up, she snapped at me, her harsh tone cutting through the air. She had always had a habit of belittling me, but this time it was clear that Tom should divorce her. Anyway, he said he'd forgive you if you paid him back the $50,000. How can I pay back that much? I'm a housewife, my sister-in-law exclaimed. If you can't pay it back, you shouldn't have spent his money, I replied firmly. Well, sis, relax. We have money, right, Rose? my husband interjected. What are you talking about? I asked, confused. She's got a hundred thousand in her savings, so don't worry, sis, he continued, directing his words at his sister. So, Rose, we're counting on you. Ha! Huh? I stammered, shocked. My sister-in-law looked at me with a gleam in her eye. What the hell, Rose? How come you didn't tell me that sooner, she demanded. Wait a minute, I said, trying to process everything. First of all, how did you even know about my savings, David? I found it when I went to your parents' house, he admitted. It was in the second drawer of the closet in your room. You looked through my things without my permission. I asked, incredulous. We're married, for God's sake, he said dismissively. Anyway, your sister-in-law is in trouble, so just give us your savings. No way. I shot back. That money is for our daughter. I'm not giving it to you. You have a hundred thousand, so just give her fifty thousand, he insisted. If that's the case, why don't you pay her instead? I countered. Whoever has it should pay, my husband argued. Rose. Please help me. I'm in the middle of a divorce, my sister-in-law pleaded. That's none of my business. It's your fault, I said coldly. That's terrible. You don't love your family, she accused. If love means giving you money, then I don't need that kind of family love, I replied. If you don't pay me $50,000, I'll divorce you, David threatened, pulling out divorce papers from a drawer. Oh, so you've been preparing for this? I asked, my voice dripping with sarcasm. I had them ready just in case, he said nonchalantly. You have a lot of nerve trying to get your way, you know that. That's exactly what I want to say to you, I shot back. He filled out the form and said, I'm serious. We can get divorced any time. To my surprise, my sister-in-law grinned and said, well, I'll be one of your witnesses. 
She then signed her name on the form. So, you can either pay me $50,000, or you can get divorced. I couldn't believe their audacity, but I decided to play along for the moment. All right, I said, pretending to give in. The next day, I brought some people to the house, my in-laws and Tom. Why are you here, Tom? And why are mom and dad here, my husband asked, visibly uncomfortable. I heard the story, his father said. David, don't embarrass yourself. Rose, I'm really sorry for my stupid son and daughter, my mother-in-law added, shaking her head. Tom, we owe you an apology too, she continued, addressing him. Why are you two apologizing, my sister-in-law snapped, confused. You shut up, their father said sternly. We went through your room and found tons of brown bags and jewelry. How did you find out? She stammered, clearly panicking. Tom asked me to investigate, and I did, her father explained. You've had a habit of hiding things since you were a child. Tom looked at her sadly and said, I can't stay married to you anymore, especially after you lied about using the money for living expenses. I want you to pay me back the $50,000 and divorce me, Tom demanded. Oh no, my sister-in-law whispered, realizing the gravity of the situation. And David, you're getting a divorce too, Tom continued. What? David looked shocked. Rose has already filled out the divorce papers, and I signed as a witness. We've just submitted them together, Tom explained calmly. What? I won't allow that. David exclaimed. You won't allow it. Tom shot back. What are you talking about? You threatened her with divorce and tried to make her, who had nothing to do with your sister's mess, take over the debt. That's disgusting. Rose is my wife. David protested. She's not your property, Tom replied sharply. She wasn't born into your family, she's a person, and you should have more respect and care for her. David couldn't argue with that. He hung his head, speechless. My sister-in-law, equally defeated, stood there in shock. Thanks to my in-laws, the conversation ended smoothly, and Tom and I were able to finalize our divorces without any problems. My sister-in-law ended up selling as many of her luxury items as she could, managing to repay about $20,000. The rest was covered by my in-laws, and she was put under their supervision to work from morning till night to pay them back. As for David, I arranged for him to pay child support. I heard that he moved into a cheaper apartment after struggling to cover his rent, living expenses, and child support with his salary. Despite living more modestly, his habit of wasting money persisted, leaving him constantly broke and with no savings. While he continues to pay child support, I'm not worried about him. If he keeps living like that, he'll likely be single for a long time. Meanwhile, I've moved back to my parents' home, working hard while they help take care of our daughter. My goal now is to ensure that my daughter can pursue whatever dreams she has, whenever she wants, and as much as she desires. So, I'll keep saving and nurturing her future.